All right, I'm getting this all set up. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Right in there. All right. If you guys are joining me live, welcome. Um, if you're not, still welcome. <laughs> if you get a video of this later, this is, uh, I'm going to be really aware of like just showing my butt to the camera and stuff. I am so not used to doing all this camera stuff and I don't know, here comes the dog. Welcome to quarantining <laughs> yoga. Welcome to teaching. Maybe. You need to go somewhere. I have no calls for you to play. Those of you who know my dog from studio, at the end of yoga class, he'll come and collect your yoga cloths from over your eyes, but I haven't had any of that. Hey, go lay down. Go get on your spot. You want a spot? Here. I, don't, I need that, though. Um, well, I guess he's using my blanket. All right, come here. Lay on your spot. Lay down. All right. <laughs> so I guess you won't need a blanket today. So I'm not using one. All right, so this is balance and back hair. Squirrel, all right, get back on page. This is balance and back hair with Flip Your Dog Yoga. Um, I was talking about in the earlier class, in the lecture class, I was talking about anatomy, and so those of you who take classes with me in studio on a regular basis know I am like an anatomy junkie, and what I'm actually doing with that is, well, for one, I'm, you know, I'm helping you feel better physically by creating some adjustments to misalignments you might have had that were causing knee or back or neck, shoulder issues, right? So on a whole... Your body feels better, and if your body feels better, the chemicals that are in your, you know, being released from your hypothalamus make everything better, right? So that's one aspect of focusing on anatomy. But I was talking about um, when I first came into a yoga practice, I was actually an atheist. Um, I was grown, I was brought up. Uh, primitive Baptist and Catholic, so I was going to hell on a handbasket no matter what route I went, right? And so there was a, a, a moment in time where I saw the world around me and didn't see people representing God in their behaviors, thoughts, actions, and, you know, and their emotions, any of it. So I um, rebuked it. For quite a while, but then I found yoga because I, I think I, you know, and inherently was still searching for a deeper connection, a reason why I was here, why all of this stuff was the way it was. And this was in my early 20s. Um, and when I came into yoga, I was very scientific about it because I did not want to believe in your woo woo freaking crystals. Um, I did not want to, like, is chakras spinning magical wheels of light? Give me a friggin' break, right? That's what my mind was like back then. So since um, I approached yoga in this woo-woo kind of uh, experience with a scientific uh, Missouri show-me state attitude, uh, it really did show me. It showed me that I don't know shit. <laughs> it, you know, it also showed me that there is magic all around me that I still, even, even science can't explain consciousness. I mean, science, I love science, but it doesn't even have the exact speed of light. Like we've got, we're throwing things in space because we know about the speed of light. Closest enough that we're not killing ourselves. But we're not close enough that we could ever time travel because we might end up in the center of a, a planet somewhere because we didn't get right on the nanosecond, right? So, you know, there's this, this like scientific aspect that really brought magic into my life because... You know, the more that I learned about how the breath itself as a voluntary and an involuntary system within the body is like the Lord of the friggin' rings. It controls every other aspect, every other that controls your heart rate, controls your endocrine system, it controls your nervous system. I mean, 
it just controls everything, right? And so that was kind of magical. I was like, well, why? 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 Like, and why did, so, okay, I can understand why it would control the systems, you know, because you need the breath to speed up when you're running from saber-toothed tigers, but why give us control of it? Why not make it autopilot like everything else? Like your heartbeat, like everything else. Why do we need to take control of the breath? Physically, like mentally on our own, take control of the breath. Why are we not still like babies that when you throw them in the water, they'll automatically, or blow in their face, they'll hold their breath automatically. Why do we, why are we able to access this thing that controls every other aspect of our body? in our existence and our perception. I can, you know, I can get you really stressed out by taking you in a really stressful breath or, and then you'll see the world in a stressful place, or I can take you through a breath work that'll make you see friggin' unicorn parts. So, right? So that was kind of like, you know, no, science doesn't have a reason necessarily why we are able to do that when we're not able to do it necessarily directly with other systems. All right. And then we even talk about the reality of the world around us. And so I'm looking at my hand that is really like, you know, maybe I have a bunch of friggin' atoms like this is that has consciousness running through it. I can control this matter because it's identified as part of me so strongly in my mind, but I can't control this matter because I identify it as separate as me. Okay. So there's a lot of friggin' magic. And when I came to yoga, like I said, I came to yoga with a very scientific, like, prove to me. And it, science doesn't always have the proof, right? However, it always showed me magic and that um, and just really a lot of wonder. And I choose, I, I love the movie Life of Pi. I choose that story. So at the end of Life of Pi, they have this thing where he asks the guy, he's like, which story do you want? And so I ask you, which story do you want? It doesn't mean you have to negate the science, but it also doesn't mean that you have to negate the, the magic too. And I think that the yin and yang runs even through our certainty and uncertainty in the world around us. And so how does that tie into anatomy even more so why I teach it on the mat? Because if I can get your body feeling better, if I can get you controlling this automated system enough that you can see the field of possibility around you, whether it's the field of possibility of new thought whether it's the field of possibility of a new experience or it's just like you're like seeing new flickers on your movie screen. What story do you want? Okay. So with that, we're going to do some balance and back care class. Um, with the balance part today, if you um, have a hard block like I have, um, I'm actually making these for sale very soon. You'll see the whole idea behind just, it's not going to be just the wooden block, but anyway, you'll see soon. Um, if you have a hard wooden block or a thick book that's, you know, at least an inch or so, so that like your toes wouldn't touch the floor, right? And you need to go and grab that. I'll give you just a moment to do that. Um, maybe a wall. If you need a wall, make sure your mat is set up against the wall. And then preferably a pillow of some sort or a blanket if your dog isn't laying on it like mine is right now. So, um, so yeah, go grab those things and then meet me at the top of the mat, uh, top of a clear mat for a moment. 
And so as you grab your things around your house, um, realize all kinds of stuff can be used for practice. So if you're joining us on a regular basis, you could use belts or neckties or even dish towels for straps. Um, books are good for blocks, especially good thick books. Um, if you want to make your own wooden blocks, they're not that hard. Uh, and pillows and blankets, I think we all have those at our house. If we don't, then why? Don't you have those at your house yet? <laughs> right. All right. Everybody should be back with me. So we're going to start at the top of the mat. I'm just going to put my goodies off to the side. Um, standing tall. I'm just turning sideways so that I have a clear shot of you and you have a clear shot of me right now. Um, big toes are either together or four inches apart, whichever serves you. There's a tendency, especially in this balance and back care class, for people to lock out their knees, which makes your knees slightly spiral inward. What I need is that your knees are directly over your second and third toe. And so as you look at your knees, like lock your knees out and notice, do they roll in? And then take them out a lot. So, you know... Feel what lock is and then what lock isn't. And it might not feel like you have a lot of strength and control out of lock. And that's that's fine. You'll build it, right? But we want to soften the backs of the knees. And we really want to pay attention to where our second toe is. We want to pay attention to where our knees are, right? One, makes us feel good. Two, it brings us into this now moment, right? We're choosing to think about what we want to think about, and I choose to think about the health of my knees right now. As I inhale, I'm going to sweep my arms up, keeping the health of my knees in mind. And then as I exhale, I'm going to forward fold, bring those hands all the way down to the mat as the face curls into the shins, the back of the neck grows longer. I'm actually pushing the floor away with my feet. I'm feeling my inner thighs lift up, and it causes my low belly to scoop or hollow out, or maybe even feel like it has a slight amount of coarsity. There's a tendency to feel the heels float off the mat. I want you to push those heels down. This will expand the back of the calf down, and it'll expand the back of the thigh bone up. On your next inhale, you're going to take your hands to your shins, and you're going to come halfway up. Push the feet down. How long from the tailbone to the crown of the head can you become? On your exhale, forward fold again, curl into the legs. On the inhale, come all the way up, reach up, stretch up, look up, maybe even try to reach those fingertips to the ceiling, and then let the hands come down along the sides. We're going to do that again. Inhale, sweeps the arms up, reaches up, stretches up, Sides of the body are long. Feel that experience. As you exhale, forward fold, hands go down to the mat. Start to feel the back of the neck stretch down towards the floor. Feel the inner thighs reach up. Feel the space between the shoulder blades expand as the collarbones open wider. On your next inhale, hands to shins. Come halfway up. Can you push your heels down? Can you allow the shins to push the tops of the feet down? The inner arches are lifted and drawing into the navel. And then you'll feel the strength of the pose melt back over those legs. Maybe even grab a hold of the ankles and see how close to the shins you can pull the face. Make sure you're pushing the heels down to lift the hips up higher. Push the shins down to feel the balls of the feet connect to the mat. And then bend the knees a little bit and sweep those arms out. Push the floor away, keeping connection with your mat as your arms reach up, fingers reach up, and then hands at the sides. Inhale, feel the expansion of the arms upward. Feel them part the air as you exhale and swan dive forward fold. See if you can get the hands flat, even if you need to bend the knees to do so. And then on your inhale, you're going to come up onto your fingertips, 
our hands onto shins, heavy in the heels, weight rocking towards the balls of the feet. On the exhale, you're going to forward fold again. On the inhale, come all the way up, reach up, stretch up, and then let the hands come down along the sides. Roll the shoulders down and back and bring the hands onto the low back. And so as you bring the hands onto the low back, notice that I'm sliding my thumbs around towards the sacrum or towards the, the spine itself, wherever you can. I'm taking a moment to make sure my shoulders aren't into my ears. I'm going to pull my elbows back and see if I can hide them out of the view. From this space, I'm going to ask you to lift the right leg up and hold for four, three, two, and one. Put it down. Lift the left leg up and hold, still squeezing those shoulders back, still standing up onto that right leg, and back down. Arms along the sides as you inhale, reach up, stretch up, look up, exhale, swan dive, forward fold, push the floor away with the feet, the front and the back of the foot. Bring your hands onto shins, inhale, come halfway up, Betty boot, flat back. Exhale, forward fold again. Inhale, come all the way up, reach up, stretch up, look up. Exhale, hands along the sides. Wonderful. All right, so we're going to do that balance that we just did, but I'm going to ask you to grab your block or your book right now. So it has to be the size of your foot, right, at least. What I'd like you to do is we're going to stand on top of this block. Um, I'm not going to mirror image for the YouTube. Um, I'll mirror image for Zoom because I just realized I had um, video uh, mirrored. All right, so we're going to stand on it with the left foot first. Notice I've got my first few toes hanging off. I'm grabbing the block with these first toes. So let me turn my block to the side so you can see. And so like my first three toes are gripping the block. And I'm going to bring my foot up as though I'm standing onto another block here. From this space, as I push my heel down and I grip with my toes, you'll notice that my arch is starting, or your arch is starting to fire up, right? And we're just going to do small movements. Bring your hands onto your hips. Bring your elbows back. From that space, see if you can bring that foot about three inches forward of the balancing leg. Holding here, still utilizing the grip of the toes of the left foot around the edge of your book or block. And then we're going to bring this foot back behind us. Still holding on to the block with our toes, especially that big toe over the front edge. And then you're going to come center. And you're going to let that block, that foot go away from the block out to the right and hold. Still alive in the left foot. And then you're going to bring that heel of the right leg across like you're doing a little soccer kick across that left leg. Holding here. And release. All right. So you're going to do that on the other side. Um, I really need to sand this block down. <laughs> All right. It's rough on my toes. All right. So as we go into the other side, we're going to put our right foot up onto the block. The first, uh, at least three toes hang off. I'm actually going to snag a book because, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the edge of that block needs to be sanded. All right. And so, Got my little toes hanging over. I've got my arch activated. I've got my left foot up as though it's standing on a block too. And now I'm going to take that left foot forward just a couple of inches. All we're doing is changing the center of gravity so that this standing leg has to work, right? Wonderful. Now you're going to take that leg back behind you a few inches, still staying focused on this standing leg. Remember, we're not blocking out the knee, right? And we're gripping with the toes. And we're trying to scrunch up our mat or our, 
our yoga block. We're going to come center. Now we're going to let it lift out to the side. And feel how this standing leg is working all around the ankle. It's working all around the calf, all around the hip as we come around and forward. Getting that left heel to swing over in front of the right leg. And release. Wonderful. Remove your block or your book from your mat. Uh, standing tall. We're going to find that top end flow again. So you're going to inhale and reach those arms up. On your exhale, swan dive forward fold. Bring your hands to your shins. Inhale, lift halfway up. And then exhale for it, fold. Grab a hold of the ankles. See if you can pull your face closer to the shins. See if you can push the foot down as though you're trying to push through your mat to the floor. For four more. Three. Two. And one. Bend the knees and roll all the way up. Roll the shoulders down and back. Find your Tibetan drum. And so as you move around here, I just want you to notice how much um, how much the mind has quite quieted down, how how maybe your body feels a little better already, how maybe um, your breath is slowed down naturally and you're not having you don't have to control it as much anymore. That's about this paying attention to do simple alignment. We're choosing to think the thoughts that we want to think. And these thoughts happen to be of self-care and involvement and feeling good. And so that's the reason that everything seems to fall in line, right? And so we're going to carry that on into our practice more. As we inhale, reach our arms up. We're going to exhale, swan dive, forward fold, hands down to the mat. Bring your hands onto your shins, come halfway up, and exhale for fold again. And then inhale, come all the way up, reach up, stretch up, look up, and drop the hands to your hips as your right foot steps back. We're going to step back with our right foot, and we're going to wiggle the foot out so that when I swing my arms up to a warrior two position, you're standing about underneath wrist. Your arms are parallel with the earth. This front knee is directly lined up with that second and third toe. Just like when I was in that forward fold in that Betty Boop, I can feel my front heel and the ball of my foot at the same time. I've got my toes. I want to reach them out, spread them, push them down onto the mat. And so all of us have picked up underwear in our lives, right? So spread your toes like you're about to pick up underwear. And just grab the underwear. Don't pick it up. Don't, don't crunch it. Don't grab a hold of it. But you've just barely got a hold of it. Don't look at underwear. It's made of lace, right? <laughs> and so your feet are nice and active now. Maybe bend that front knee a little more without shifting forward, right? Staying nice and upright. And then straighten that leg. We're going to open up the palms. Slide over that front straight leg. Put the fingers down just about the shin or the thigh, but it's moving forward as though it wants to bend. The top arm can either reach up or turn the palm out and drop it behind you. So we're opening up the shoulder. We're keeping the breath through the rib cage. I'm keeping my front foot rooted. I'm keeping my nice long back. I can feel my back foot too. Maybe you look up at the sky over your right shoulder. Wonderful. Inhale comes up. We're going to take those arms up. We're going to tick tock the feet. And so in this space, we're going to come into this warrior two on the other side. And so for my warrior two on this side, I'm expanding my arm. In through the nose, out through the nose. I might choose to bend that front knee deeper, keeping this back inner thigh 
not from shifting forward, but keep it backed up, lined up like you're keeping this thigh bone lined up with this back ankle bone. As you straighten that front leg without walking out the knee, like we've been discussing, flip the palms, reach out. Now let the fingers come down onto shin or thigh. Let the top arm reach up or drop behind your back. So there's this forward motion of this right shin so that it pushes the ball of the foot down. And then you'll feel the inner thigh of the right leg start to slide back so you can feel it in the front heel as well. Front foot is pushing all the energy back to this straight, strong left leg. As you inhale, come up, turn the toes towards the sides of the mat. So you've got 12 o'clock with your second toes. They should line up with the edges of your mat. I'm going to turn around so you can see. You're going to drop your hands behind you and braid your fingers together. Once you braid the palms together, roll the shoulders down and back, open up the chest. This is where we're going to come back forward into our forward fold. As you forward fold down, the crown of the head reaches to the floor, and the knuckles reach up, right? And so just like we were doing earlier, where we were keeping the front of the foot rooted, but not letting the heel float, we're pushing down through the heel too without a locked knee. And so make sure your knees aren't locked here by rooting through the feet. Paying attention to all these little anatomy points. Take the hands to the hips. We're going to inhale, come halfway up. And then on your next inhale, you're going to come all the way up. We're going to turn to step back to the top of our mat, maybe finding a Tibetan drum. And so taking the arms and swinging them around. And paying attention here. And there's there's another little aspect of paying attention to the body in this space when we're doing our practice. Because sometimes we do things that actually are hurting us, but we think that they feel good. Example, I've got a little space in my back here. I get it every little bit every time my heart hurts. Just kind of, it's a thing, right? Chakras. Anyway. And so when I twist, I tend to also twist in that space because I'm feeling this body languaging of a heart injury, right? And so I'm trying to open this space up. So mentally, my mind goes into just drilling that space. But if I really feel it in take time, does it actually feel good when I do that? It might feel like it's stretching it, but it's like one of those painful stretches. It isn't like oh, I just got up, stretch. It's more of like, I need you to stretch. I need you to stretch because I'm heart injured and I need that to open up, right? And so wherever you are, maybe take the shoulders, roll them around, roll your neck around, and are you doing this in a way that you're paying attention enough to find out where you're creating small injuries in your life, whether they're small mental injuries by the, the thoughts you think, those little zingers you get, or physical injuries by physically zinging yourself with your behaviors, right? Awesome. So stop. It's kind of like the doctor says when you go in, my arm hurts when I do it like this. And the doctor says, stop doing that. Go do your arm, right? And so don't think like that. Don't let, don't go into areas of the body and force it into a painful space, right? So taking the top of the right foot, just flipping it over so you feel just enough stretch that you feel like you want to move into it a little more. That's the goal of a yoga practice, I truly believe, is that you're always like feeling like you could do a little more. You can move into that space a little more or that you're open to it as you progress. All right. Other side. Right. Not. I'm completely tanked and I can't do it anymore. That doesn't necessarily feel good, right? Wonderful. All right. So the next balance posture you may need a wall for, especially if you find balance to be uh, slightly challenging for you. And so I'm going to ask you, since we're standing on the left foot first, I always start with my problem child first, right? Um, I'm going to reach my left hand out to the wall so I can just use fingertips. 
I'm going to grab either the back of the right knee or preferable the right shin. I am trying to stand up straight and pull that in as though I'm doing a knee hug laying down, right? And so <laughs> as you do this, it's not just about the arm pulling it in. It's about the standing leg. Push that floor away without locking the knee out. I'm actively pushing the floor away. And then it's how much am I actually drawing this leg into my chest and then standing up here for four more. Three. Strong, strong, strong. Two. And one release. Awesome. So other side, I'm going to do it without a wall. Pretend there's a wall here. Right. We'll see how well this works without a wall today. Right. And so I'm going to wrap my arm around the, the leg. But I'm also going to stand up really straight. And I'm going to try to actively not round into my leg, but bring that leg to me. Right. Right. And so I'm standing up tall, pulling it in, pulling it in, pushing this foot quality into the floor for four more. Three, two, and one. Release. Shake that all off. Wonderful. All right. So from here, I'd like you to go ahead and if you've stepped off of your mat to come back to your mat, we're going to bring the big toes uh, as close together as possible. If you can bring them together, that would be wonderful for just what we're trying to do. And so um, from this space, I want you to bring your arms down along the sides, palms face forward, and close your eyes. And so as you close your eyes, begin to feel that natural sway that happens in the body when the eyes are closed. Just experience it for a moment. And then as you experience it, notice you're not freaking out about it, right? You, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm swaying around. You're not glitching and trying to control for balance right now, for most part, right? All right. And keeping your eyes closed and feeling that natural sway, I want you to draw the low belly back a little bit. And then keep the shoulders relaxed down so that they don't lift with the inhale. Now feel the inhale come into the chest, keeping the belly tight so that it doesn't allow the breath to sink too deep into the belly. It's not gripped. It's just compacted, right? Corseted, right? And the shoulders are remaining down because they have a shelf of the upper abs to sit on. Now notice as you do this, that that swaying has come to a little bit more stillness. It's slowed down slightly. Okay. So as you notice that uh, that swaying has come to a little bit slower, a little calmer, also I've noticed that your mind has come in with that. So those of you um, ready, I'll go ahead and open up your eyes. So as we go into this next balance posture, um, try to take on those thoughts that we just did, where the balance itself is a little naturally sways around that you don't have to grip to control it. And that if you do need control of it, it's really about pulling that belly down and keeping the breath in the container of the rib cage. Right? So we're going to get our block again. Right? And so I'm going to stand on it with my left foot first. Remember, I'm going to grab a hold of it with my toes. This block is really getting sanded today. I'm not messing around no more. Right? And so my first three toes are hanging off so that I'm gripping so that my foot is nice and aligned. Right? And I'm going to bring my knee back up into my chest. Right? Now, from this space, see if you can, I'm not holding my knee there with the hand. I'm, I'm giving it a little extra love, right? Just that little bit that I'm holding it with everything else, I could let my hand go, but the hand's going to help me hold it for like 60 seconds longer, right? And so as I grip with that standing foot, 
in through the nose, out through the nose. Four more. Three. Two. And one. Release. Awesome. Other side. So, um, coming into this other side, being the first three toes. Hanging off the back. I don't know. All right. And now I'm going to bring my left knee in and hold on to it. I'm really not holding on to it. <laughs> Just that little bit of holds to let me balance here and hang out here for another couple rounds of breath, right? Especially if I'm focusing. If you're looking around, try not to. Try to focus on something that's not moving out in front of you. Okay. And release. Wonderful. Awesome, guys. Go ahead. And you can set your block off. Actually, we'll come back to the next portion. All right. So um, go ahead and come back to your mat. We're going to come to a seated position. Those of you who join me in studio will um, know that the first part of this class we tend to do standing. The second part of the class we tend to do on, on the floor and on the mat. <laughs> With this block, we're going to do a asymmetrical bridge posture. So bridge is where we lay on our back and we lift our hips up. So I want you to look before you lay down because in bridge, supported shoulder stand, several postures, if there's any kind of pressure on your neck, you should not turn your head. And I can't get on to you because I can't see everybody really well on the video and the live class. So watch first and then do. So I'm going to take this block and I'm going to make sure that it's like straight and lined up on my mat about where my feet would stand if I was standing in mountain pose, right? So this is going underneath the right foot. So wherever my right foot would be on the mat, aligned on the mat, that's where that block is going to go. I'm going to scoot my butt down close to that block, right? And I'm actually going to put my right thigh bone directly in front of that block. I'm going to put that right foot on. So those first three toes are hanging off. I'm going to lay onto my back. At this point, I'm going to look at my left thigh and I'm going to bring the legs back so it looks like I'm lining up my thigh bones to the best of my ability, right? So one's going to be a little bit lower, so it's going to seem like the knee is um, forward, but what I'm looking for is like a parallel right here and the ability to root through my left foot with quality. Reaching the fingertips down, grip that block with those first three toes, feel the arch of the right leg fire up. Now push the feet through the floor and through the block. What you're going to feel is as you push down through the left, you're going to feel a little stretch in the front of the left hip because it's lower. As you really root through the right foot, grip with the right foot, start to lift that pubic bone higher, Pushing the feet down for five, four, three, two, and one. Slow motion, lower down. We're going to bring that right knee into our chest, much like we were doing in our standing balance. We're going to bring our fingers over the shin. You're going to take the left leg out as though you're standing on the wall balancing here, just like our balance pose we just did. So this left foot is nice and active. Now I'm going to lift my heart up. I'm going to pull that knee into chest, just like I was doing in that balance pose. I'm only kind of using this for decoration, just enough that it helps hold me up a little bit. My navel is going to spine. I'm corseting my abs as much as I can for four, three, two, and one. Head down, feet down as you slide that block over. Just give it a little peek if you need to. Make sure it's lined up and straight. First three toes are off. I really want the, um, the heel to be able to root into any situation you have going on down here. And I also want the toes to be able to curl over. You're going to reach your fingertips down. Press your shoulder blades back. Push the feet through whatever surface they're on to lift that pubic bone high. As you do this, because this leg is lower, 
you should feel a nice little opening in the front of this right hip flexor. Since this leg is higher, you should feel a nice powering, some strength going through that butt cheek for four, three, two, and one. Slow motion, lower your spine down, bringing your left knee into your chest, barely hold on, stretch that right leg out as though it's balancing on the wall below you. Lift up and hold here. So notice my leg isn't really high. My leg is pretty low for four more. Three. Two. And one. Nice and easy. Remove the block out of your way. Taking out all your stuff. Soles of the feet together, knees open wide. So cobbler's pose or butterfly. Reach the fingertips down along the hips. Palms are down. Crawl the right shoulder under, then the left shoulder under. So we're going to do um, the upper body first. So watch, look over here to me. So hands are underneath the edges of your thighs. You want to tuck them underneath your butt. You're more than welcome to do so, right? So my palms are down. I'm going to dig my elbows in. It's going to lift me up. And I'm going to try to come to the top of my head. Now, for a lot of people, especially if you sit at a desk all day, this is going to be really hard. So I want you to continue. If you have to, come to the back of the head. Don't let the shoulders come forward. Push the elbows down. Open the collarbones wider. Get really strong in your back muscles. For four, let that heart higher as though I've got a string connected to your sternum. And lifting you up, three more, two, and one. Release the head down. Pick the hips up now. Press the soles of the feet together. If you want to shorten this up a little bit, you may. So I've got butterfly legs, and I've got my pelvis moving to the sky for four more, three, Two and one. Put the bum down. Bring the knees together. Pull them in. Rock and roll left and right. Those of you who enjoy doing happy baby, you can grab the outsides of the feet. Notice that my knees um, are directly underneath my feet. My actually, I'm trying to get my knees into my armpits very, very close to my rib cage, moving down towards the mat, right? Now, if you can't grab hold of feet because your legs are really not 27 inches long like mine are, you can always grab the backs of the knees. But what I'm really trying to do is flatten the low back a little bit and bring those knees in around the hips, right? So from here, we're going to take that cobbler's pose onto our back. Soles of the feet are together, right? So now this cobbler's pose is coming into our chest. The tendency here is for people to round their low back. I don't want that. I want that low back growing long, the back of the neck growing long as the feet come into the chest, right? <laughs> so where's your mind? Where's your breath? And release the knees together again. Give a little love, squeeze them in. Wonderful. We're going to take the right leg high. We're going to take the left leg long. Um, the left leg is floating the floor. Unless you need to put the foot down, then you can bend the knee, right? And so I'm going to take my hands behind my right calf. Some of you, if you have super short legs like me, can reach the foot, you know. Uh, yoga is a lot about geometry at some point. But no matter where you are, let's take the face to the shin and lift it up. And so a lot about getting this leg straight is to extend 
through the ball of the foot, get that quadricep long. So instead of trying to pull the leg to you, try to reach the leg to whatever is above your head for four. Like I'm trying to touch my toe to that curtain over there that you can't see. Three, two, and one. Head down, knees come in, rock and roll, left and right. Wonderful. From here, we're doing the same thing. So mirror imaging, if your foot was on the floor or it was floating out, decide what that was, and then feel the reach of the foot, right? As you bring the face to the shin, I'm not just pulling on the leg. I'm extending through that leg for four more. Three. Two. And one. Very good. Go ahead and bring those knees into chest. You can rock side to side. Some of you might enjoy rocking head to tail. Back and forth, back and forth. Um, we are getting ready to move into our meditation and our shavasana. So if there's any little spinal twists or extra movements that you would like to do, do so here. Um, one of my favorites uh, for spinal twist after this particular class is to take the feet wide as though I am doing a super wide chunky bridge. I'm going to drop both knees to, let's say this is to the left. I'm going to take this lower leg and put it over the outer thigh, right? And take my arms out and then my vision can go over towards that right side. Wonderful. Unpretzel the leg first, if that's what you have. And then we'll do the other side. So windshield wiper the knees over to the other side, taking that right ankle and putting it to the outside of that left leg. Notice that I'm still keeping my shoulders rooted and on the floor. I take my vision in the opposing direction of my knees. And so if my knees go to the right, my vision goes to the left. Wonderful. Coming center, bring your feet flat onto the ground. Do a little extra windshield wipering, if that's what you like. And then you're gonna stretch the legs out. I suggest covering with a blanket if you can. Once we go into this deep meditative breath, several things happen. Once again, why do we focus on anatomy? It's because we're trying to make stuff happen, right? And so when we focus on the slow, Breathing as you guys lay here in Shavasana, your body's actually going to start to cool down. There'll be your heart rate's going to slow down. All of everything should start to go into repair mode, right? But we've got to get our breath and our mind there. Typically, it takes three good rounds of breath, so three quality breath rounds. And you can control, start to control the chemistry of your body. And so it usually takes like 10 breaths to even get, to start to get on that pace. And so as you get all your little wiggles out, get your blanket over you, maybe something to cover your eyes, whatever it is, find that and shimmy into your Shavasana right now, your corpse pose laying on your back. And begin to feel that breath. Don't try to change it. Don't try to do anything to it just yet. Just feel the breath. Maybe you notice the breath on your upper lip. Maybe you notice it as it passes the back of your throat. Right. 
And then notice how good your breath feels, how good it, it, it feels to lay there and cycle those inhales and exhales. And then maybe start to notice how long the inhale is. Maybe notice the space in between the inhale and the exhale. Maybe even notice how easy the exhale is. How breath just flows out of you. Then begin to notice how the body feels laying here. Notice the space around the body and air that immediately surrounds you. If you can feel with your mind's eye that space. And then begin to see if you can feel the space of the whole room that you are in right now. Bring your mind back to the air that surrounds you. The air just outside your skin.
Maybe the breath across the top of your lip or your nostril. Then expand that breath all the way down to your toes, all the way to your fingertips, making slow movements that feel natural to you. And when you're ready, roll over to whatever side feels best to you today. Soften my seated position. Letting the inhale and the exhale come through the body. On your next inhale, sweep your arms up, reach up, stretch up. Allow the hands to fall in prayer in front of your chest as you exhale. Thank you so humbly for joining me for practice today. Let your minds be open and your hearts full. Namaste, friends. Hey, guys. I'll see you later. Have a beautiful afternoon.